At Healthcare Partners Medical Group, our mission is to provide the highest quality of healthcare to each and every patient. With five locations in Pahrump, we are local doctors you know and trust. We want to thank you for choosing us. Quality care starts here. News 46 is brought to you by... Healthcare Partners and Humana. News is also brought to you by Barry Levinson and Associates, Harumph's Bankruptcy Center. When it comes to important matters like bankruptcy, call an experienced, compassionate attorney. Call the Bankruptcy Center of Harumph. Call 775-727-4747. News is also brought to you by Tire Works Total Car Care. Not your typical tire and service company. Guaranteed lowest prices on tires. Your one-stop shop for all automotive needs. Call 775-751-6100 or 702-365-TIRE. Tonight on News 46, a local represents Pahrump and the United States at Oktoberfest. And a new photography studio opens its doors. And a famous artist oasis right here in the desert. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46. With Rick Vale and Rhonda Van Winkle. Local coverage from Deanna O'Donnell and News Across Nevada with Janet Eric. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Wednesday, November 9th, 2011. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle for News 46. And in tonight's news, Nevada Highway Patrol has issued a press release regarding a fatal accident that occurred Monday on Interstate 15. The preliminary investigation reveals that on Monday evening at approximately 10.35 p.m., a green 1999 Ford Escort was traveling southbound in the northbound travel lanes of I-15 near milepost 79. At the same time, a gray 1998 Toyota Camry was traveling in the northbound lanes on I-15 headed straight for the Ford Escort. While the inevitable happened, the Ford Escort struck the Toyota Camry head on. The driver of the Ford Escort is identified as 67-year-old Charles uh, Chawalski of New Bedford, Massachusetts. He was pronounced dead at the scene by Clark County Coroner Investigator Kristen Peters. The driver of the Toyota Camry was transported to the University Medical Center by Medic West Ambulance Services. And former 8th Judicial District Judge John F. Mendoza has died with his family by his side. He served on the bench in Clark County from 1967 to 1991. During the 1970s, Judge Mendoza served as juvenile judge and was instrumental in developing juvenile court services into one of the top five juvenile departments in the country. All right, and Security of State Ross Miller forwarded a case to the Nevada Attorney General's Office today to pursue payment of fines levied against former State Assemblyman Wendell Williams as a result of campaign law violations. Campaign finance reform is a priority in my administration, said Miller. Mr. Williams' failure to file campaign contributions and expense reports for the 2002 election cycle and pay subsequent fines is not something we take lightly, and this clearly necessitates aggressive collection efforts. Miller also said, we're prepared to take whatever steps are necessary to collect the remaining $9,500 that Williams owes to the state of Nevada, as well as any interest, attorney fees, and cost incurred as a result of his failure to meet his payment obligations. And Desert Breeze, which is located on Winery Road, lost their contractor license last week due to substandard workmanship. Desert Breeze was also charged with over $14,000 in fines plus restitution to eight complainants. And a local man who writes travel guides served in the military and is a volunteer firefighter here in Pahrump. He also represented the United States and Pahrump at this year's Oktoberfest in Germany. We spoke to Brett Harriman. This is my 13th time. 
Why do you go to Oktoberfest? They invited you, didn't they? Well, this time around they did, yeah. It's just the, the, the greatest honor. Um, I lived in Germany for five years as a tour guide for the U.S. military. I uh, lived near Munich. So that's kind of where the trend started back in 1998. I went to my first fest, mm -hmm. and it was just up the road, you know. So then once you go once, and then you go the next year, and then you go the next year, and then you start getting a tradition going, and now I can't break it. So I go every year. Um, I'm gone every September and October in Europe and then just to get updates from my guidebooks as well. So I kind of tie it in with that. Your guidebooks, you're writing travel books now. Yeah, to Germany and Austria, yeah. Yeah, you can find that at Amazon.com or my website. This is a great thing. So you're gonna, you, you go to both countries as well, but you're also a volunteer firefighter too sure. here in Pahrump at uh -huh. the Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue. Yeah, I've been doing that for about a year. It's great down there, it's great, I love it. Some of your experiences at this last Oktoberfest were amazing. Um, tell me some of the people who you who who invited you originally, and yeah. what else happened. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was so excited. I got an invitation from the president of the Oktoberfest uh, to join her in her carriage uh, to represent the United States of America mm -hmm. for the opening weekend of the Oktoberfest, and and to sit in her carriage with her um, to lead the largest. Uh, traditional costume parade in the world of over 7,000 participants, so the opening uh, Saturday and Sunday. And um, yeah, every year she picks two people to represent their countries from around the world. Uh, the last time America was picked was back in 2006. Mm -hmm. And she got wind of me through my writing, and uh, it was just a, the greatest honor. Um, unfortunately, that, that particular day, it just poured rain. Mm -hmm. But we made the most of it, as, as you'll see in the pictures. We made the most of it, <laughs> and it was just fabulous because it's uh, you, you're there with the mayor when he taps the keg on the Saturday, mm -hmm. um, which kickstarts the Oktoberfest, which is 12 noon on Saturday, and um, fabulous. Met a lot of wonderful people, including the the general counsel of the American consulate. He came down, and um, you'll see a picture of him as well, uh, Mr. Conrad Tribble. And um, so we have a consulate in Munich, and, and he's the head of it and a bunch of other dignitaries and, and stuff. It's fabulous. You also as well represented Pahrump, Nevada. I see this vest that you had oh, made. Yeah. Bees Embroidery here in Pahrump made it for you. They did. They did a fabulous job. Um, you'll be uh, uh, showing a picture of that. Actually, you'll see it in some of the photos that I, I, I've uh, brought along with me. But um, wonderful job. And so everywhere I went, yeah, it's in Pahrump, uh, Pahrump, Nevada was on display. It definitely was, and I saw that one of the the consulate is showing a turning you around and showing that. Yeah, that's the the head of the Munich, uh, the Munich con the American consulate in Munich. Yeah, Mr. Conrad Tribble. That's a great picture. Uh, it was interesting because I was wondering how do I introduce myself or how do how do you approach um, uh, the the someone like this, the head of an, um, uh, a consulate, mm -hmm. and because I had heard he he I mean he knew I was going to be there and wanted to to meet me since I was representing the United States and uh, he came up to me had a beer in his hand and, hey cheers you know they say prost prost and <laughs> it was great so you'll see that picture there and uh, it's j just fabulous wonderful guy from California actually oh really yeah. you are wearing lederhosen yeah lederhosen it's the traditional uh, outfit uh, the men wear the lederhosen which means uh, actually <laughs> leather pants is what that translates into mm -hmm. and the women uh, wear the costume called a dirndl so that's the I don't know what do you call them, the bosom enhancing uh, <laughs> uh, outfit. It's. Uh, you also brought some items from Shadow Mountain Feed here in Pahrump as well. I did. Well, actually, yeah, that's part of the story I didn't mention. Um, as part of the invite from the president, um, when you're representing your own country, you got to. They'd like you to dress in your your native costume or a costume native to your your country. So, uh, I chose a cowboy. And I went down to Shadow Mountain Feed and, yeah, picked up the gear, you know, a cowboy hat and um, uh, the, the Wrangler shirt and jeans and belt buckle, big old belt buckle. And uh, so you'll see that in the picture as well. And I presented then the president of the Oktoberfest with the cowboy hat. And you'll see that picture. She's posing with it. It's, so I left that behind. And um, she loved it. So everybody said, oh, you're going to give that to your son? And she goes, no, I'm keeping it. <laughs> That is wonderful. So you're planning on going next year for your 14th year? 14th time, yeah. I'll actually be running a tour. I ran a tour this last time. I'll be running a tour again, or I should say a tour package. Mm -hmm. So we'll be there at the opening weekend. Um, you'll see the parades, um, and we have a table uh, so mm -hmm. you can um, uh, celebrate the Oktoberfest like a local. Yeah, that's fabulous. So that's uh, on my website, harrimantravelbooks.com. Yeah, tell us about your website. So you have the travel books. People can purchase them um, from Amazon.com, like you said, but it's best to go to your website? Um, 
either or. Amazon as well. It's I probably actually prefer to buy it through Amazon because then you get those rankings up. Oh. And uh, my my Salzburg uh, guidebook just back in July first actually reached fourth wow. um, for books in the category of Austria. Well, coming up, a new photography business opens its doors in Pahrump. And we visit an artistic oasis in the desert. We'll have all this and more right after the break, so please keep it here. News 46 is brought to you by... Southwest Medical Associates. Their healthcare center is now open in your neighborhood. Southwest Medical Associates. Now that's powerful medicine. Welcome back to News 46. Congratulations to Elena Arms, who opened the doors of her new business this morning, Pahrump Photography. I'm standing in front of Pahrump Photography, where they held a ribbon cutting here this morning with the Prump Valley Chamber of Commerce. We're going to speak to Elena Arms and her family. Basically, I've, I've been a photographer for the last nine, ten years, and uh, it's just been a dream of mine to open up a studio. And I've just, it's basically a dream come true. And I, I love, I, I'm very passionate about photography. I'm very passionate about taking photographing people and I just love it. I really do. I know that you're a photographer for a paper out here. Yes, I used to work for the, the Pahrump Valley Times for about three or four years. I, I love that because it was a community and I love Pahrump. So you had a ribbon cutting today with the Pahrump Valley Chamber of Commerce. What's that mean to you to join the Pahrump Valley Chamber of Commerce? Well, basically the networking and just meeting the other business people in Pahrump, it's really important and just getting to know, just basically having, bouncing ideas off each other and helping support each other, that was, that's really means a lot. This must be really a dream come true to open your own studio here. We're in the Provenza sh Center here. Yes, yes. I actually uh, work for uh, Elizabeth Provenza um, with real estate, and I also uh, am becoming a real estate agent as well. So it's it's one of those side jobs kind of thing. It's it's a be with all that I can be kind of thing, and I love uh, I love working for Liz as well, and I'm just transitioning from that to uh, having my own business and selling houses. Wonderful. So. You have a studio inside here, which means that people can come and get their pictures taken professionally. What other type of photography? I do. Uh, my favorite is children's uh, portraits because uh, I love working with the kids and babies and also uh, and family photos. I do on location, in studio, um, and I do senior portraits uh, and I, school photography. Um, and I do, I'm starting to do weddings in probably December or January. Are your kids here going to help out a little bit with the photography studio? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. I'm mostly going to help with the weddings with, with my mom and just help along, uh, along with her. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, Elena, do you have any packages you want the public to know about right now? Um, well, uh, you call me up. It's by appointment only at the moment. And packages start from uh, $39.95 to uh, $99.95 and uh, pretty reasonable. With the photo session, uh, with the sitting fee, you get uh, a high res resolution. And if you choose to have me print the p pictures, I can do that. Or you have the copyright uh, to print them so from whoever you would like. Uh, I do have great packages and just make an appointment I give you ten dollars off the print packages and and by mentioning this I'll, I'll give you ten percent off the total by mentioning this uh, that you saw this interview yes ma'am yes uh, bye <laughs> so what's the phone number here it's 775-209-9091 well, Pahrump is filled with a multitude of artists of all kinds, and when you visit Eno's property here in Pahrump, it's hard to believe that this oasis is here in the desert. Eno came from Finland originally. He loves Pahrump and loves sculpting. We visited his home this morning to view his breathtaking artwork. 
Well, I I moved to Peram basically, or we moved to Peram because there's certain freedom here. People not telling you all the time what to do. In my work, I even I have worked in 22 different countries. I needed a little oasis middle of some nowhere, and I feel we have the place here. And I know your artwork is displayed all over the world, like you said. Where do you originally come from? I was born in Finland in 1940, and then lived in Sweden, back in Finland, and I moved to U.S. 1962, beginning, so I'm almost 50 years been here. And I know that you have some artwork that moves here in your yard, the wind. Well, I'm very proud of my newest piece called Windflower. It's made of, out of a Brazilian flu quartz called Azul de Mar. And to make a stone that turns by wind, it's a symbolism that I like. I think we have to look at to the future and to understand the future starts right now. And that sculpture, if any of mine, it's important. Only other time I did something like that. In the early 1970s, I worked with the Caltech in designing a sculpture that turns in by solar power. Mm -hmm. And that time, solar power was just starting. And I loved it because the scientists told me I couldn't do it because you, can, you need the batteries. And I said, well, there's a way to do it. And I found a way not to needing the batteries. And I got into technical magazines all over the world. Mm -hmm. And the sculpture is somewhere in Santa Barbara, I think, in a music institution. Yeah, and you have you have some solar powered lights here that everything's made in stone, but one of them lights up solar powered. Well, yes, actually that's still on work because I want in the beam middle of the night I need to find a better stone to light. I kinda of want a beam top top of the stone as a lens and when the dark comes you can see this beam going towards the sky and that's by solar power because I believe Solar power is such an amazing thing. And when I made the solar sculpture, it, you know, what, one thing I found, I made it to go one RPM. Mm -hmm. And the amazing thing was that even in a cloudy day, it turned half RPM. Mm -hmm. I have one more thing to do in my, um, in my energy series. Mm -hmm. And that one is by temperature. I want to make a 30, 40, 50,000 pieces of sculpture then turns by the temperature. Wow. And I already have designed it. it. Naturally, you have to do it. Like this wind sculpture, I got the idea early 1970s. I had a scientist, uh, Knut Magnusson from, from Montreal, visiting me. And he gave me the idea when he was talking about the wind power. It took me. <laughs> 35 years to make it, but now it's reality. These stones are extremely heavy. I know that you have one that's 600 pounds, it's spinning on a pole. You even have the American flag and another um, type of flag. Well, I don't consider 600 pounds, pounds much because my heaviest corpse I made weighs 400,000 pounds. Wow. And we'll have part two of this story on tomorrow night's newscast. Dorothy Slicker spoke to us about last weekend's Art and Soul event at the, at the Sanders Family Winery. Yes, I came over and I talked to Jack and he was so gracious in uh, providing the facility for us and uh, he helped me put it together and take care of everything here so I didn't really have a whole lot of work to do. I had a wonderful committee, a committee of four, that uh, put this event together. Each one of us had our own project to do. Thankfully, your TV station helped us out by producing our book, taking over and helping us out. It's wonderful and we're very appreciative about that. Tell me a little bit about that book. About what? About the book that you guys put together for this event. Well, it's one that we usually do ourselves, but with the economy the way it is, people were just turning us down right and left, and we were not being very successful. And so I had a conversation with Vernon, and he said, well, this is a project that we do. And he gave us some options, and he opted to do it, and it just took a big load off of my shoulders, and it is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, he is giving us a donation back. He produced the book 
and covered all the expenses and then was give, gonna give us a percentage back for PAC and it, that is wonderful. It is a wonderful thing. And uh, tell me a little bit, Sutter's Family Winery has a great location for an event like this, especially Art and Soul. This has just been fantastic. I mean, the weather was not good to us, but yet the facility is large enough that we just moved everyone inside, and so we're nice and cozy and warm. Uh, Jack directed me to Porta Subs to help provide the food, and then we have uh, Sugar Magnolias right down the street that um, got to partake in doing this too, and it helps a new business get known, and we have a wonderful event. Yeah, it is really catered lovely by Sugar Magnolias as well. So this event is an all weekend long event, and it's our 17th annual already. The 17th annual and my third time being chairman. It's going to be wonderful. So we're looking forward to next year on this event as well. How many vendors do you think we had um, participating this time? We have 20 vendors this time. We did have one lady who got sick uh, from her students. She was a school teacher, so she had to back out. So we had 19 vendors here, all wonderful artists, and they've come. Uh, this artist here with the wood carving, he came all the way from Banning, California, to be. I know we had somebody here from Ohio as well. Tell me about the train, though, over there. Well, the train over there is a project that my husband and I have started, and everyone in Pahrump knows Marta Beckett. Well, Marta Beckett donated us the original site of the Borax Company. And uh, we're raising money to restore the inside of that, and then we will be showing the complete line all the way from Ludlow to Rhyolite to Beatty, out through Death Valley, Ryan Mine, featuring the Ryan Mine, of the Tonopah Tidewater train. This is the rail that was started to replace the 20 mule team. Wow, this is fantastic. And so we're going to have a beautiful museum out there with and it will all be shown the complete layout of the whole line in HO scale. And folks don't go anywhere because we're gonna have Zach Fuentes right after the break with a look at our weather. News 46 weather is brought to you by Healthcare Partners Medical Group with five locations in Pahrump. Local doctors and professional staff providing total care from infancy to seniors. News 46 weather is also brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. News 46 weather is also brought to you by Humana. And welcome back to News 46. I'm Zach Fuentes here with your weather. Today we had sunny skies. It was pretty nice out there. Our high was at 62 degrees, a little bit higher than it was yesterday where I believe it was at 58. Our winds came out of the east today at 4 miles per hour and our gusts were up to 11 miles per hour. Our pressure was at 30.39 and our UV actually went down a little bit at 3 but still moderate. Our humidity was at 17% and our sunrise was at 6.14 a.m. The record for today was 82 degrees back in 1978. Tonight it looks like we're going to have clear skies, a low of 41 degrees, which is kind of high. We were expecting 30, so that's a little bit higher than what we did expect. Our winds are coming out of the east-northeast at 4 miles per hour, and our gusts are going to be at up to 5 miles per hour. Humidity is going to go up at 37%, and our sunset's going to be at 4.41 p.m. Still very early for us. We're still getting used to that, I think. Our record for tonight was 26 degrees back in 1945. And tomorrow we're going to have mostly sunny skies, maybe a few thin little clouds out there. Our high is going to be 65 degrees higher, and our low is going to be the same at 41 degrees. Our winds are going to come out of the east-southeast at 4 miles per hour, and our gusts are going to be at up to 6 miles per hour. UV index is going to stay the same at 3, moderate, and our sunrise is going to be at 6.15 a.m., our humidity at 21%. For our seven-day forecast, it looks like clear across the board. We're going to have cloudy skies. Saturday, maybe even a 20% chance of rain. Our temperatures are going to be a little bit high for, compared to how they have been lately. 68 is going to be the highest we have. Oh, actually, 70. Wow, we're going to go back into the 70s on Wednesday. Our overnight lows are going to be in the 40s, not the 30s as it looked like it was going to be yesterday and the day before. And today's worst weather was in Bowler, Wisconsin, where they had snow. Back to you. 
Mm, bowling for snow. <laughs> well, luckily, it's not cold enough for snow here just yet. No, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Well, you know, we had talked so much about art, and we yep. just wanted to mention that there's another form of art, which One, is... My favorite form of art. Food. food. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> the Prump Nugget Steakhouse, Stockman Steakhouse, is um, changing their menu. It's effective immediately. And they have some new things on the menu, and they invited us to come do some taste testing, and we're both stuffed. I'm surprised we didn't fall asleep right here on the desk. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, wake yeah. up, wake up. Yeah, sorry. It was really good, though. It they have was. some really good phenomenal. stuff. Yeah, definitely. And we're going to hopefully have um, some footage and a story about that for you tomorrow in Tomorrow Night's nice Newscast. And if not tomorrow, we will have it by sometime next week so you can actually see what these great dishes look like. But trust us, they were all very, very good. You definitely want to check it out. Yes. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this edition of News 46. I'm Rick Vale. And I'm Rhonda Van Winkle. And from everyone up here in the Hill of KPVM, we wish you a safe evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Rob. Good night. News 46, local coverage you can count on.